Hi guys, hope you're having a great day. I got an article coming up for you guys, which has an interview of the co-founder and president of NEO, Mr. Kim Lee Hong, guys. He's got a lot to say in the article, a lot of notable and amazing points that he's bringing up, but he's mostly going to be talking about the pricing and how it sees the current losses that NEO has. Although China's auto industry has grown to become the largest in the world over the past few decades, no local brand has managed to enter the premium market dominated by German luxury car companies until NIO came along. In the traditional fuel car era, local brand vehicles were mainly priced under RMB 200,000 or around $30,000 guys, well below the RMB 300 to 500,000 range of BMW, Mercedes-Benz and Audi's main sales models. This is because these German luxury car companies have successfully educated local consumers after decades of efforts in China to make them synonymous with high end. There is simply no possibility for local brands to break through the pricing mechanism of the German luxury car companies if they follow their strategies under the already established dealership system. However, with the advent of the electric vehicle era, the direct sales system that emerging car companies like Tesla and NIO rely on has brought the war to a completely different market. In particular, NIO's new brand image built on the basis of that system through user operations has made it the first local Chinese brand to successfully gain a foothold in the premium market. In a recent interview with consulting firm McKinsey, NIO co-founder and President Chen Li Hong explained how the company's user operations have worked and how this has helped the company challenge the pricing system of German luxury car companies. So we also know that NIO's ET7 is selling right now. It's in the top 10, the seventh spot to be exact since last month. The ET5 is coming up. A lot of cars are being sold by NIO. NIO was able to do something that other car manufacturers, other Chinese car manufacturers couldn't do domestically in China's mainland guys. They are the only one right now with kind of Xiaoping and Liaotou which is also doing very well right now that were able to break through the mentality of the Chinese people because the Chinese people put their focus on the German engineering, the German marketing. It all affects you guys. If you want a German car, you may be thinking you're going to get something premium, you're going to get something long lasting, pretty good, well built. Mostly those cars that we see here in Europe are better built than those in Europe in the, in the US because the US manufacturing is kind of clumsy and it's not on par with the European ones. The European factories do better work, especially when we're talking about Mercedes-Benz, BMW and Audi guys. So Overall, it's an amazing feat to hear that the co-founder and president Chin Liang is so positive about NIO and what they have been able to establish right now in China. He also said that if NIO didn't use a direct sales system or user operations, but simply mimic the traditional car company distribution system, its vehicles would sell for at least 20% less than they currently do. For a long time, there has been a ceiling on pricing for Chinese car companies even though Chinese vehicles may be a little bit better for the same product, they are conventionally 20,000 yuan cheaper than South Korean cars, 30,000 yuan cheaper than Japanese cars and even more than German cars. It seems that this is the only way they can open up sales. In this environment, do local car companies dare to say no to such pricing? Can the price be set at tens of thousands of yuan more expensive than the German brands? And what makes you more expensive than the German system? This series of assumptions was, was important topics of discussion at the beginning of NIO. Through many efforts including user operations, NIO got a very intuitive result which is a relatively high brand premium according to Chin. NIO's average vehicle price is currently higher than some traditional German luxury car brands. Chin said and he provided information on the selling price of NIO vehicles. Although that the company's three SUVs on sale had an average sales price of RMB 443,500 in December last year, that's second only to Mercedes-Benz and higher than BMW and Audi. Now we're gonna go over to the important part which is the user operation costs versus the advertising guys. 
Neo is unlikely to have a lower cost of sales per vehicle on average than a traditional luxury brand if it uses a traditional dealership model, but rather a much higher one, according to Chin. For example, the same purchase of a 30-second TV ad would cost the traditional luxury brand and Neo similar amounts, but the former would see the ad bring in nearly a million units of annual sales, so the average ad spent per vehicle would be significantly lower than Neo's. Such a huge gap is impossible to bridge even if you make efficiency gains and precision placement to the extreme. So we have to differentiate strategically if you want to compete with traditional car companies that have scaled advantages. And to find differentiation, NEO can only work on one variable, and that is user recommendation. Therefore, NEO needs to consider how to systematically increase the percentage of old users recommending new users and make the recommendation scenario as natural as possible by increasing the frequency of offline activities. This strategy is very different from the industry's common, highly purposeful sales referral campaigns. In addition to user referrals, Hosting large events that work well is another important initiative for NEO. Chin said, taking the first NEO day in late 2017 as an example, the company received enough orders within 24 hours of the event to cover a year and a half of deliveries based on the volume of deliveries that followed. Of course, at that time, NEO's new factory capacity was subject to many restrictions and delivery time was too long, which led to the loss of some orders. And the final reality was that it took a year to complete the delivery of these orders. The amount of orders received from one launch was enough to deliver for one year, which meant that NEO didn't need to make large advertising campaigns for the following year, achieving a systematic cost reduction. The resources saved can be used to do the maintenance of interest users and this cost will be far less than acquiring new potential customers by throwing big ad. And he finalizes this interview with saying that he believes that NEO's investment in the business including battery swap stations and NEO Life is cost effective in the long run. Assuming NEO delivers 10,000 vehicles in the first year, the average loss per vehicle is RMB 10,000, then the loss is RMB 100 million according to Chin. By the time there are 1 million users, as long as each car earns RMB 100 yuan on average, the RMB 100 million will be made back, he said. If by that time NEO's capabilities are in place, assuming an average of 1,000 yuan per vehicle, those users would bring in RMB 1 billion. Engine said. Everything we're doing now is for reasonable, sustainable profit when the base is large enough, he said. Adding, so we're going to backtrack and look at what level of investment might be needed at the current time. So guys, I'm just amazed by the co-founder and president. Basically, he's the co-founder, so he has a lot of uh, involvement into the company since the start. He's way back, guys. He's just like William Lee, been, been there from the start and up until now he's working on the company. When you're looking at this interview, this man is like a genius. He, he has most probably like a lot of experience, a big IQ guy, because the stuff that he's saying right now shows me and is confirming to me and to all of the NEO users, to everybody that is invested in NEO, that these guys are really long term guys. Just look at the management, the caliber that we are having in this management team of NEO. This is just big guys. It's amazing to see William Libin having partnered up with such an amazing guy. Look at what he's always, look, look, look at the, the strategy that they have for the long term guys. They want to have a good base so they can work on it. They don't want to spend on ads right now because they figured out they can't produce right now as much cars as they would need to sell because those ads are going to cost a lot of money for each car that's going to be sold because they can't produce the volumes needed for the sales that will, they will be making guys. But most importantly what we can get from the, this interview is that the stigma is broken of Chinese cars being bad because let's not forget it, Neo is going to come to Europe and in Europe they are going to sell guys. I've seen a lot of other Chinese car manufacturers doing pretty good in Europe right now. Uh, another example of it is Link & Co. It's basically a Chinese company and they're doing good guys. Why not? I've seen A-Ways, they are doing bad because they have no marketing in Europe. Their cars kind of suck, they are crappy made. Manufacturing isn't up par, but Neo guys, when we're talking Neo, we're talking Mercedes, we're talking BMW, high level cars guys. And it just shows guys, people are buying it, people are satisfied, service are very good, you're getting warranties for a lifetime. 
everybody wants a new guys I'm just personally waiting until the ET5 or the ET7 code comes here because I'm going to be buying myself an ET5 or an ET7 for sure the car is just amazing and who doesn't want a lifetime warranty guys like don't kid yourself guys it's something anybody wants anyway guys hope you guys enjoyed the video the interview was just amazing go again through it hope you guys have a great day I'll see you guys in the next one ciao ciao